So Einstein says that the Galilean transformation equations are wrong, which seems insane. How could, how could they be wrong? And the answer turns out to be in the assumption that t prime equals t, that time is time, that different observers always agree on what the time is. So if t no longer equals t prime, how do we move forward? How do we figure out what the correct transformation equations are? Well, the path forward is to focus on the thing that we do know, which is that the speed of light is the speed of light. That's what Einstein said, that according to Maxwell's equations, the speed of light is c, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, always, always, always in every reference frame. So we use that statement to say what it means to synchronize clocks. And synchronizing clocks is going to be essential to figuring out how we think about time in different reference frames. So we say that two clocks are synchronized if they measure the speed of light to be the speed of light. All right, let me say a little bit more about that. So when we measure um, speed, uh, so let's use an example here with Anastasia. So we're measuring speed. Imagine she's in some race. She starts here and goes there. And we want to know how fast did she go. So we're going to figure out what time it is when she starts the race, figure out what time it is when she ends the race, and then we can subtract those two times to figure out how long she was running for, figure out the distance between these two points. Distance over a time interval would give her speed. So what we would need to do is have a clock at the start of the race and a clock at the end of the race. And notice that these are clocks that are at different points in space because the race doesn't begin and end at the same place. So when you measure speed, that necessarily involves a statement about clocks in two different locations in space. So we can take that idea and sort of turn it backwards and say, all right, now suppose we know the velocity. The speed of light is always the speed of light. We can use that fact to figure out whether or not a pair of clocks are synchronized. The clocks will be synchronized if they correctly measure the speed of light to be the speed of light. So here's a more formal statement of this idea of clock synchronization. And I realize this is wordy and abstract. In the next video, we'll work through an example, and it's going to make really good sense. So don't worry. All right, so a light flash is emitted by clock A at time TA. So here's maybe clock A, and it emits a light flash heading in this direction. And then um, clock B receives this light flash at a later time, TB, as read on clock B. And the picture here is that both of these clocks are in the same inertial reference frame. All right, so these two clocks will be synchronized if the distance between these two clocks is equal to the distance that light would travel in this time interval, TB minus TA. So another way of saying that is that these clocks are synchronized if they measure the speed of a light flash traveling between them to be C. So this statement about synchronization, this requirement, um, gives us a way of synchronizing clocks at different locations in a reference frame. And in the next video, um, we'll do a quick example and you'll see how all this works.